Hi, triangle patterns detection can be automated using specific algorithms. So in this video, I will present a simple method to detect different shapes of price movement triangles. Then we will write a Python code and test it on Forex data. And at the end, we can plot the discovered patterns to visualize our results. The Jupyter Notebook file containing the Python code is available for download. If you are interested in the coding part, you may find a link in the description of this video. Obviously, the reason we are interested in these triangles is mainly when they are needed in our trading strategy. For example, some traders might trade the breakout of the triangles, like it's shown on these two examples here, where the price will follow a future trend in the direction of the breakout. In this example, the price broke out of the triangle edges following a downtrend, and we can see that it continued in the same direction of the breakout. On the right example here, the price broke out of the triangle edge, following an uptrend and we can see that we have a continuation of the breakout trend. The method steps are the following. First, we will compute pivot points, then we will fit maximas and minimas in linear slopes. The pivot points are price values that are greater than their neighbors. For example, the low of this particular candle right here is lower than the low values of three candles from before and three candles from after this central candle. We might, of course, take different number of neighbors. For example, we might consider five candles on the left and five candles on the right and this is left as a variable to experiment on in our code same thing for the maximas only we compare the high values and we are looking for a central candle which high is higher than the considered neighbors before and after the central position so all of this can be automated in python then we can look for particular triangle forms depending on what we need for example this form is detected when the maxima slope is negative and we have a decreasing slope at this point Point, and the minimal slope is positive meaning an increasing slope in this case we have a converging triangle another example is this particular form that can be detected the maxima slope is negative and the minimal slope is very close to zero or to a horizontal line and we can call this a descending triangle okay so now let's go and write all of this in python and see how it worked out so this is our jupyter notebook file we are starting by importing our data i'm using the euro us dollar four hours asking price between 2003 and 2021 we have a time column, the open, high, low, close price, and the volume for each candle. Then as the usual, we are cleaning the volume equals zero, meaning the flat candles, because these are bank holidays and weekends that are of no interest for our program. Then we can define a function called pivot ID that would identify for each candle if it's a pivot point it will return one in the case it's a pivot low meaning its lower value is lower than all the neighbors on the left and on the right same thing if it returns two meaning it's a pivot high meaning it has a very high high and it's higher than its neighbors the neighbors numbers are n1 and n2 these are the neighbors on the left or before the candle of interest which is candle l and the n2 is the number of candles after the central candle that i'm testing at this point we can call the function on our data frame and use three by three meaning i'm taking three candles on the left and three candles on the right of our central candle in order to detect if it's a pivot low or a pivot high and the return value is going to be added into a new column called pivot in our data frame so at this point we can think of visualizing our pivot candles just to make sure everything is working properly and for this i'm defining a new function called points position because i would like to plot the candles and add points above and below following if they are pivot high or a pivot low so if the pivot signal is equal to one meaning if i have a pivot low in this case i'm going to add a new point which coordinates on the chart is equal to the low minus 10 to minus 3 otherwise if it's a pivot high meaning the signal is equal to 2 i'm going to put the point above the high of the current candle so we can run this function and apply it to our data frame and store the positions of the points into a new column that I'm calling point position. Then we can use the plot lie package in order to uh, plot the candles. So this part here, we are taking a slice of our data frame that we're going to plot. We can't plot all of our data at once because it's going to be cumbersome for our graph. And this part here is going to plot the candles. We are defining a figure with the open, high, low, and close prices of the candles. And we're going to add points using the add underscore scatter function using the indexes for the x values 
and for the y value we are using the point positions column so this is what we are observing here for the slice that we have selected of our data frame we can zoom in into a smaller part in order to see clearer where the points are exactly positioned and we can see that here we have a point that is higher than all the other candles the three candles on the left and the three candles on the right this point right here is a pivot low because it's lower than the three candles on the left and the three candles on the right and so on so if we compare all of these pivot points it seems like it's working well of course if you want to be more selective you can increase the number of neighbors that you are comparing to for example instead of taking three on the left and three on the right we can increase this to five neighbors and so on in order to filter weak pivot points for example like the one we are seeing right here okay at this point i'm going to show you an example how it works before we start the detection of the triangles i'm considering the candle id with an index 5358 and i'm looking back 20 candles before this particular candle i'm going to scan all these candles up to the candle id just to see if we have a triangle shape in this area. So first I'm defining four NumPy arrays to store the coordinates of the pivot points. And for each candle, for I in range, between the candle ID minus back candles for each of those 20 candles here, up to the candle ID plus one to include the current candle. So if we have a low pivot point, I'm going to store its coordinates into minimas and XX minimas. So these are the two NumPy arrays that are dedicated to store the minimas values. At the same time, I'm checking if we have a pivot high among these back candles, these back 20 candles. I'm going to store these into the maxima and the XX maxima arrays. Then I'm going to use the function linear regression to fit these minimas and the maximas into two different slopes. And this function is going to provide back many different parameters. At this point, we are only interested in the slopes, which we are calling slopes of the minimas and the slope of the maximas. And now we can plot the candles using plot lie. I'm selecting the same slice of the data frame and we're adding the pivot points scatters. And at the same time, we are going to add the slopes of the minimas and the maximas that we have just calculated using the linear regression function. The linear regression function is taken from the scipy stats package. So you have to include from scipy.stats, we're going to import lin regression first. So in order to add a line to our figure, we can use the add underscore trace function, and we will provide the x of the minimas and the y of the minimas. However, the y of the minimas, now we're going to use the slope of the minimas, the fit that we have just calculated using the uh, linear regression function. And we are going to use also the intercept of the minimas that is also provided by the linear regression function right here. So in other words, we took the points, the minimas points and the maximas points. We fit those into two different slopes. Then we are using the equations of the slopes to recompute a higher number of points and to make a line out of this, just to put this on our graph. We can see that it's a beautiful triangle, converging triangle with a breakout following a downtrend. Notice that up to this point, we haven't included any of the conditions that we should have, like the upper slope, for example, should be negative and the lower slope should be positive. The reason is that I already knew that this particular candle is going to show me a triangle in the area. The way I discovered this is by using the second cell, which is right here. So this cell is going to detect which particular candle is showing the triangle form I'm looking for. It looks very similar to the previous cell in the sense that we need the back candles number. So we're looking 20 candles before any candle to check if we have a triangle form in that zone. Then for each candle ID, for each candle index, in the range going between, let's say, 5,000 up to length of the data frame, you may choose a different number here. I'm starting, let's say, with the number 3,000 index or even at zero. And we're going to define the maximas, the minimas coordinates as NumPy arrays. Then for I in range between the uh, candle ID minus the back candles up to the current candle ID, we're going to check if we have pivot low or pivot high. We're storing the coordinates into the uh, corresponding NumPy arrays, which we are going to use later on to fit 
into two different slopes. However, this time I only want to detect the areas where I have at least three minima points or three maxima points. So if the xx max numpy array size is less than three, meaning I have less than three maxima points, and at the same time I have less than three minima points or even if I have an empty maxima points or no minima points in this case we will continue our for loop meaning we will go to the next candle because we don't have enough minimas and maximas to carry on with the fit and do what we are intending to do if these conditions are met then we can fit the minimas and the maximas that we have into two linear slopes using the linear regression function and this part here is the most important part because this will define the shape of the triangle you are going to detect first of all i'm using the absolute value of the r factor for the maximas and this is somehow a correlation factor it's closer to one when we have a perfect positive correlation and it's closer to minus one when we have a perfect negative correlation if it's closer to zero meaning that the points are too far apart from the uh, fitting slope and it's not a good fit that we are using for this particular triangle so in other words i want this absolute value to be as closer to one as possible I put 0.7 and this is where you can get more selective. If I put 0.8, I'm going to detect more, let's say, perfect shapes. However, I'm going to have much less detections in my data frame. Same thing for the minimas fit, meaning the other slope of the uh, minima pivot points. The absolute R min should be greater or equal than 0.7 in our case. Remember that the R max and the R min are provided by the function linear regression which is right here so this is the function that will provide the slopes the intercepts and also the goodness of the fit let's say let's call it this way the correlation factor r minima and r maxima so if we are seeing that the points are very close somehow to the uh, linear fit it means that we are imposing a very high absolute value of this r factor and if we want to be let's say more forgiving from this perspective we would allow for a fit with points that are further apart we could simply decrease this uh, particular value then we have one additional condition we need the slope of the minima the absolute value be less or equal than 0.001 it means that it's almost horizontal and this is where also this limit would play on how much would you be selective is it really horizontal or you would allow a bit of a positive or negative slope to uh, be taken into account so here we are looking for a horizontal let's say decreasing triangle because the minima slope is almost horizontal and the maxima slope is negative in other words we are looking for this particular shape where this slope here is almost zero and this one is negative and now if we find these conditions all together we can print let's say the r minima the r maxima and the candle id which is the most important parameter i would like to identify the candle where i'm seeing this particular shape now something very important that we can notice here is that the uh, program is breaking as soon as we find such a candle so the candle id 5358 was detected and the shape if i go back to the um, to the graph it's right here 5358 i would zoom in the algorithm so only this detected a triangle and let's look what happened in the future of this candle so this is the whole picture at 5358 we detected a certain pattern triangular pattern and if we continue into the future we see that the pattern is respected by the price and then we have this breakout somehow it might be a promising indicator for our trading systems now let's try to change these parameters to be more precise we would like to have a lower slope that is somehow closer to the horizontal slope i'm going to run this so starting from the index 10,000, we are at index 15,000 and the algorithm still didn't find anything with the conditions we have implemented here. So at position 19,225, we have a decreasing triangle. So I'm going to take this one and try to plot it to see. And that's what we got. So 
this is what our program is detecting so we have a decreasing pattern right here then we have a certain support right here a small triangle was detected in this area and as soon as the price broke out of this triangle we can see that we followed an uptrend so for trading the uh, detection was kind of late it's at 19225 which is this red candle here i'm going to zoom in a bit on this part so it is this red candle here however we are looking at a break out of the triangle and if we wait for a confirmation candle like these two green candles we could have taken any long position here it would have been a good trade putting the stop loss at the support that was detected right here and we can try to find an ascending triangle in this case i'm going to change these parameters so i'm not going to touch the uh, r max the armin we're going to write it this way so now we have a minima slope that is positive that is greater or equal than 10 to minus 4 you may of course increase the slope but remember that the more selective you are the less signals you will get from your data and the absolute slope max is horizontal meaning it should be close to zero as much as possible let's not be very selective in this case either okay and then when we run these conditions now we get a uh, candle number 16224 and if i plot this particular candle it's this candle right here we can see that we have an ascending triangle so we have a resistance level here and the minimas that are increasing towards the uh, triangle shape and then when we had this jump that say the breakthrough uh, out of the triangle edge resistance level the price retraced a bit and then we had a big a climb up in the price so this also would have been a good trade if we would have bought at some point right here we can try one additional example for a converging triangle so i'm going to copy this part here that the slope of the minimas is positive and at the same time the slope of the maximas is negative so it's going to be minus 0 0.001 i'm going to run this but first I'm going to comment this part and we get the candle id 10011 we're going to plot this particular candle and this is the triangle the converging triangle we are getting at this stage here at this point so for this green candle here we already have our signal and we are going to wait for the break out of this triangle and as soon as the um, as soon as the price broke out of here we can see a decrease in the trend so this also looks like a good signal i'm going to try one more example so let's start at 11 thousand the candle we're going to test it it's 11113 we go back here and this is another triangle okay so these are not the best triangles this is not the best triangle that we can get the algorithm is not working properly at uh, some parts of the data and the reason why is because we took 20 back candles so we're testing for 20 candles if we have the formation of this particular shape the triangular shape and this is happening because we are trying to fit these three maximas into this slope now the way to get rid of these signals is to be more selective on the uh, r max the absolute r max condition so if we increase this to 0 0.8 or even 0 0.9 we are being more selective and this would get rid of some of the false signals in this case so now with the same set of conditions just changing the correlation factors to above 0 0.9 we get 12,082 and let's try to plot this one so it's 12,082 and this is what we have we have something almost triangular right here and as soon as we have a break out of the edge of the triangles the trend is continuing in the same direction of the breakout okay this was it for this video i hope you liked this algorithm it's fairly simple but at the same time it allowed us to detect those triangular shapes if you are interested in seeing these in use in a trading strategy that we can backtest please let me know in the comments if you have any related ideas also i would be interested to know your feedback until our next video trade safe and see you next time